Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for holding this hearing. Uh, it's so important to us in the Northwest, particularly in fire season and all that we're doing. So uh, I joined two letters uh, you know, to the administration asking that Washington State be declared a disaster area for that and obviously get assistance. We have a Wildlife Management Technology Act, which is helping firefighters get access to mapping, GPS tools, and location of firefighters, which we think is a critical part of how we address this issue in the for, in uh, moving forward. The FirstNet um, nationwide wireless broadband network dedicated to the public safety is another aspect of that. And so we need to have effective communication. So the FirstNet in 2012 uh, made progress in the deployment of uh, you know, an essential network to help with that. My question is, um, I'm hoping that as we look at this moving forward, and part of it is just, uh, we always get into the situation where um, in disaster areas, not everybody has access, and then people don't, let's, let's say the right way to say this, states uh, want to get their ducks in a row before they ask for the declaration, because when they ask for the declaration, if they don't have their ducks in a row, they feel like they'll get turned down. But in the meantime, a community sitting there without great access trying to coordinate a disaster response. So we've been pushing for more clarity on that so that everybody just has all the broadband access that they need in coordination. So um, as I mentioned, fires are what we're dealing with. So Mr. Parkinson and Mr. Porter, how has FirstNet been able to help during those disasters in providing uh, you know, communication in the current fire season? And what are you doing particularly with tribal areas? Because they're particularly uh, on the short end of the stick when it comes to broadband capacity. And many of these are, you know, again, the center point. Uh, four years ago in one of our biggest fire, the Colville had to just, I mean, they were their own response. And so we need to have good communication with them as well. Yeah, so I can start. Senator Cantwell, uh, thank you. For, first of all, I uh, want to just thank your state uh, for being uh, so progressive and such a, a leader in this area. The, um, I, I have regular communications with Chief Lombard. Uh, Chief Lombard has been a, a great fire leader out in your state and it also, as you know, serves on the on on FEMA and we have done innovative things collectively working together to put us closer together with his emergency operations centers and his planning so that we can be there. Um, and, and you mentioned the fires. Uh, we have, in fact, we have a picture over here uh, from Washington that is us uh, hand in hand with FEMA at their operation center, as well as the state EOC uh, emergency operations center as as they're working so we're you know tightly integrated with your response team to the fires um, but I will say it goes even far beyond this um, we we did deploy a, a sat cults in your state to help uh, provide coverage for the fire uh, response but it's so much more than that we actually have members of my team that are uh, sleeping at base camps at fire camps to make sure that we understand the needs and are there to provide devices, to consult with equipment and the use of it. Um, we've mentioned that we need, need multiple layers of support to help public safety. So you can see the SAT cult and the deployable behind me, but there are also, uh, as, as we mentioned, routers and switches that we need to be able to deploy to help these operations work and, and in the field give them hardened devices and capabilities to be able to uh, withstand the fire. Um, I, I also wanted to mention, you talked about uh, rural and tribal areas. Um, your state is one of the areas that we've been very focused on trying to build in those rural areas as well as the other states. Um, we have put new sites um, on air in Lewis, Pacific, Grant, and Yakima counties. Um, we've also deployed Band 14 in Seattle, Tacoma, Spokane, Richland, Kennewick, uh, Olympia, Bremerton, Yakima, Kittitas, and Whitman. And we're very excited about the new coverage that we've put in, uh, near Yakima Nation. And we've got a, uh, several other sites that are prepared for uh, tribal lands that we're working on access and ability to deploy.
So do you think that we're ready to integrate then with these other tools that we've given on fighting fire so that you can do firefighter location and system? Yeah, in fact, uh, right behind this picture was, uh, I mentioned it earlier, but this is an application that is in our application ecosystem. And, and this you can only do with a broadband network like FirstNet. You, you cannot do it with two-way radios. Um, this is an application that Fire is using today and what they do is they can see their own uh, assets and people moving on, on, the, uh, on the ground. And then they can also see the fire as it moves on the ground. And so they can use this to move their assets into the ideal location to make the most effect to put that fire under control and keep their people safe. Well, we, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, there's no amount of effort I don't think that we need to be doing here given the increase in the fires. But in the Carlton complex, this is how the Colville got left on their own. But then uh, another two counties over, Ponderé, literally that county was left to their own. The resources that we had as a federal government and the state were all in the, you know, right in the center uh, trying to deal with uh, basically uh, the Okanagan and various, various aspects of that. So then where fire starts were, which now we're seeing, rapid fire starts, these people, literally, the county <laughs> citizenry, were left on their own. And guess what they were trying to do? Communicate to the whole county what people should do, but they didn't even have broadband. So literally, these rural counties are left to fight these disasters on their own. And the one thing, listen, I believe in our citizenry. They are, I'm you know, working on legislation I, uh, with my colleague, Senator, I mean, uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers in the House and, and some of our Senate colleagues to how do we, you know, empower them more to help us in these emergencies. But one of the things they need is broadband. So I hope we can continue this effort and I hope we can get the network smart enough so that we really know where everybody's deployed in fighting the fires. So thank you, Mr. Chairman.